interviews reality in this video i am going to share my experience in interviews to understand what worst you can expect from any interviews and how to tackle those situations because most of them do not know that only 60% of the interviewers comes with preparedness and rest 40% of them are unpredictable so the interview session can go in different way it can go beyond your expectations or below your expectations so it's really important to understand how this entire ecosystem works so that you will not blame yourself for the entire failure understand so without wasting your time let's get started so the first thing that i wanted to insist and stress is that you must understand that failure or failing in interviews are very common with everyone it's not that people who does not possess any skills fails more people who has a lot of skills also fails more so you have to understand the requirement varies with different companies and uh, different interviewers and your responses and how you handle the entire situations so it's not about having a knowledge or not having a knowledge so that is what i am planning to explain in this video so in my case uh, right from uh, my academics and i was really good in my studies i was always above uh, the average uh, i could generally score more than 80 percentage in most of my academics career i would say so i consider myself as one of the candidate who possess most of the knowledge okay uh, but my first couple of interviews were so horribly failed that it was um, it was completely uh, <clears throat> i mean collapsed my uh, motivations and um, i could not uh, realize um, what mistake that i have done and where to start and how to correct myself so it was uh, a complete collapse that i would say but unfortunately over a period of time <clears throat> with multiple interviews and uh, that particular phase has gone i will not say that i have improved on that particular somehow i got into a job so i was able to learn continuously so over a period of uh, diff different experience and different interviews i realized that interviews uh, are not only depend upon your uh, performance it also depends upon different factors so you don't have to be serious when you actually fail during the interviews so that's very important so if you had multiple failures in interviews please Uh, you have to understand that this is very common so you don't have to think that you are the only person kept on failing it's common that most of the people fails during the interviews understand second important thing over qualified people or under qualified interviewers i mean over qualified interviewers and under qualified interviewers can ruin your day let me tell you because you may go with some expectations if you happen to get some under qualified interviewer he will ask you questions which you which is totally not related to the nature of job because when you go for an interview the most important thing is that whether the candidate possesses an enough knowledge in order to work and produce the deliverables that's it there is nothing less or nothing more but there are some under qualified interviewers they will ask you a lot of theories what you have studied during the colleges and schools which is totally has no relevancy or no relation with, with the job that you are going to work so this happens if you experiences an under qualified interviewer but at the same time if you get to experience an over qualified uh, person he will screw you like anything screw you in the sense he will ask subjects which are actually uh, not required for the actual job but provided the questions will be more relevant for the that particular field but it may not be relevant for your position for example if somebody ask you a question what a senior engineer is going to do with to a junior engineer definitely a junior junior engineer may not be able to respond right so it comes knowledge comes with an uh, with uh, experiences with uh, different uh, challenges and by learning more and more right over qualified interviewers will screw you with a lot of things which are really not required to be known for that particular experience so this is not your mistakes so you have to understand that this happens so how you handle those situations that is very important so if you get to experience an under qualified or over qualified 
at some point of time you have to realize and you have to speak boldly speaking boldly in the sense not speaking without politeness you have to be polite and speak boldly for example if you get to experience an underqualified person you have to politely tell them that these are theories and um, subjects which i have studied during my schools and college and i was really good at uh, those theories at that point of time and even scored a better um, uh, score uh, during my academics but however since my concentration is more on to the activities which are related to this particular position which i have applied so i concentrate more on that so i kindly request you to ask the questions which are uh, you which were more relevant for this current position so then i'll be answer uh, better than what your expectation so that is how you have to handle those uh, questions actually unless you boldly speak you will have to experience such situations and for people those who are um, uh, i mean to deal with an over qualified um, uh, interviewers you clearly have to tell them that um, from what you have experienced and what you have learned uh, you are very well aware about uh, the, those areas but uh, the things which you have not experienced uh, and believe that these are uh, done by senior engineers and you you will be able to learn over a period of time when you get uh, those experiences and uh, you have to acknowledge that these are areas that i do not know because uh, i am currently working in a different level so if i get an opportunity i will definitely improve my knowledge so likewise you have to stop them politely and tell them boldly this is very important the third point is harassment harassment is generally rare in our industry but there are few interviewers still continue to harass candidates so you have to expect such situations in the interviews and prepare your mind accordingly so that you will be able to perform better than others so let me give you an example about it say for an example your college score or your school's scores may be less compared to your knowledge about your work maybe you are excellent in your work you are excellent in the tools that you are working in a particular industry for that particular position you may be having an excellent knowledge of that particular job you have applied but the interview i mean the interviewers kept on saying that your school score and college score is poor so that he don't think that you are fit for this particular role so which is totally not relevant and he may ask you about some extra curricular um, uh, i mean uh, knowledge or participation training certifications which you have not possessed that is totally not relevant to the job as long as you are aware about what the job is needed and if you are qualified having all the skills and knowledge which, which you can perform for that particular job that is enough but most of the interviewers they will handle the situations very politely but there are some interviewers who will try to harass you by pinpointing your mistakes again and again so how to handle that situation somehow at one point of time you have to stop them stop them politely and you have to tell them that very strongly from whatever experience that you have uh, earned you know that the subjects that you are looking after is not required and not required to be questioned even you have to tell them that and request them ask something which is relevant to the job that you have applied and if you if he continues to harass you by pinpointing your mistake you can simply walk off from the interview because remember you have performed uh, and you got the job so you happen to work in the, with the same person what will be your life uh, working with him day in and day out every day you will have to go through the same kind of harassment so which may not be healthy for you right from your it will affect your uh, health even physical health and mental health so if you or uh, if you feel that you are harassed during the interview at some point of the interview you have to stop them and politely tell them don't be too harsh and don't be too aggressive that is very important how to handle the situation very politely it's very important you may uh, show your anger you may not show your anger if you show your anger you may lose a good opportunities at times actually but if you show the politeness actually so you you may be reconsidered so maybe uh, the interviewer will realize his mistakes and he will change the tone uh, in a different way so that uh, he will focus on to the particular question which is related for that particular job so it's important to boldly speak and say that this is what i experienced you ask only this particular one and you if you ask anything more than that actually 
which I have not experienced, you may not be able to answer. Very clearly, you tell them. And the fourth point is, it's our own mistake. Partial preparation. There are interviews that we feel that uh, we are too much confident about the subjects and we go with very partial preparations or we don't do full preparations. Uh, for example, if there are five areas and if you are co uh, confident about one particular area, you will skip that one particular area and only focus on the rest of the areas. Okay. So instead of revising the entire subjects, actually, you will only go with areas which you do not have confidence. But it's important to revise the subject where you are confident also. Because there are times that if you go with the partial preparations, you will be asked certain questions which you have not prepared. So that is one of the most common experiences with everybody. So after the interview, you will literally feel that uh, we should have spent little more time in order to revise the whole things. Okay. So do not ever give that opportunity or miss that chance. Actually, you have to prepare with 100 percentage requirements. So you have to focus on all your areas better take a note of it. So if you're going for any particular interview, go through the job requirements in the interviews and see what are the areas that they are looking after and see your expertise as well. Make sure that you have listed all the notes and keep on critiquing each of the requirements by going after uh, by referring these materials one by one so that you will never miss any particular area and also you will go 100% preparedness. So 100% preparedness is the very important thing because there are interviews which will give you a better pay and um, better work life balance and um, I mean uh, better uh, colleagues and better knowledge and better platform to learn many other things because interviews are generally considered to be the gateway for opportunity to make your life a little better. Right. So you have to do 100% preparations. From my experience, I'm telling you that I really have uh, missed um, uh, some of the good interviews by doing partial in, uh, preparations. So uh, that has really troubled me. So then I realized that if I had done 100% preparations, actually, I would have been able to clear those interviews. So 100% preparation is really important. And the last but not least is you might have performed exceptionally during the interviews. Your performance might be outstanding, but still not selected. You have not received an offer letter. You may be wondering that what mistakes that you have done. You may be kept on um, brainstorming about the conversations between you and interviewers and the responses that you have given. And uh, you may be keep on analyzing whether you have responded rightly, the, whether the answer is right. Have you missed anything? So you will go through a lot of uh, mental trauma in analyzing even after performing uh, exceptionally well during the interviews. So what would be the background? What would be the back end, uh, uh, what you call situations of the company? Why they have not sent you an uh, offer letter? This you have to understand first. Only if you understand that what the, con uh, the companies go through at that point of time is really important. Otherwise, you will keep on thinking about your inferiors actually. So you will keep on uh, going through a trauma, which is not at all an essential thing to go through. So I'll tell you a couple of examples, actually, even after your uh, exceptional performance during the interviews, you may not get an offer letter that the reason may be uh, various uh, factors. Maybe the company uh, what they might had um, um, what you call expected some project from the client. So uh, all of a sudden, maybe after a week or a couple of days, the company would have received a notification from the client that the project has been put on hold. So whoever has been recruited for that project will not have be called. That's very simple, right? When the company do not have a project, they will not call the people, those who are recruited for that particular uh, project. So this is one important area. Second important area is that actually. When you are given an interview, you have to think that you are not the only person who have given an interview. Generally, most of the companies, when they uh, recruit a particular, uh, I mean, uh, goes for an interview, they will uh, take at least 10, 15 candidates because they don't want to end up with only with one particular guy. They need to have an options. They need to have uh, a candidate, at least three to four candidates, actually. And from three to four candidates, they will choose one or two as per their requirements, actually. So it doesn't mean that even after giving exception, you, know, you may be selected. Maybe the guy, other guy who was selected um, was ready to work with low salary. Maybe uh, like he, he has impressed uh, more than you. So uh, there may be a lot of things which you never know about it. 
But what I'm saying is that you don't have to be really worried even after giving exceptional interviews. You kept on improving. That is your daily process that you should not stop actually. But instead of going through traumas, instead of analyzing and putting uh, all your energy in thinking about what your failure, it's not going to be that worthful actually. Once you're given an interview, you have to keep calm and keep working on your betterment, keep learning the skills, keep learning the subjects and don't ever think about the result of the interview. If you have really, if you are really performed and if you are deserved, if the company is in a good position, you will receive an offer letter. But just because that since you have not received an offer letter doesn't mean that you are not fit for that particular role. There are companies generally uh, sometimes they uh, keep the applications in hold for a longer period of time as well. So you may receive maybe after six months, after one year as well also. So those things are also happening in the industries. So these are five different very common situations that you have to experience in your lifetime. So that's it for today. I will meet you in another fantastic video. Until then, bye from Subhash Chandra.